Hi, so we are going to go ahead and cover some of the um, some basic technical skills and technical um, resources that you need to have available for success on your online course. Uh, so let's first take a look at how the courses are set up. Um, so basically when you go into a course, let's get to a, kind of a sample course here. Okay, so in a standard course, what you're going to have is you're going to have a set of topics. So when you first go into the course, you'll see a couple of things that we want to point out. Okay, uh, so the couple of very important things we have. We have uh, basically the course is set up into three columns on your, on your interface. So on the left-hand column here, we have our navigation pane. Uh, then we have our settings. Oops. So we have our navigation. We also have our settings down here. Uh, now I'm logged in as a um, as a teacher right now, so let's make my interface look like yours, like a student's. Um, so basically, on the left hand side, you're going to have that navigation. So that's where you're going to get to your other courses if you have multiple courses. On the right hand side we have a column. Uh, this is where you're going to be able to search your forums to get uh, the latest news or I'm uh, sorry to get help or to look for comments from your teacher. You also find here latest news. This is where your teacher might post uh, things um, that pertain to the course. Upcoming events. This is where if your teacher posts for example like when a test is going to be on their calendar on the course calendar, this is where those events would, would pop up and they'd show you where it is. Uh, also, you're going to have a recent activity. This is the things that you've done in the courses. Um, and then you're going to have additional things like, for example, in this system, we have a voice thread. Uh, this is where you'd go and log into your voice thread account. Other plugins, other type of external websites would also appear here as well. Your private files are going to be here. These are things that you've uploaded onto the web server, but you haven't necessarily put them into an assignment yet. Okay, and then section links. Uh, this is going to link you to the different topics that we're going to we're, that we're about to talk about next. Um, so okay, so now let's go into the center um, the center column here. So you'll notice that the course is divided into topics. Um, and you may be able to see all the topics at one time, you, and your instructor may um, turn off topics so you can only see one topic at a time. So you may go into, and that might be different per class. So if you notice as I scroll down here, there's topic three, and there's topic four, and there's topic five. So in general, let's say you have a semester long class, um, your topics are going to be your units basically. Uh, and that means the way that the course is is divided up. So if you can imagine a textbook, just like a textbook would be divided into units and chapters and sections, uh, a course online on on the Moodle installation that we have here is going to be divided up into topics and lessons. Um, okay, so the very first topic in a Moodle course has a lot of important information. Um, normally it will be called a topic outline or something like that. It's the first topic that you see and what you'll see here is basically that we'll have an announcements forum, so that's your news forum, that's where a teacher will post things that you actually get in your email automatically if your email is set up um, that we'll take a look at in just a second. And also you have your resources, so this is where your course guide will be, that's your syllabus. Remember that that's the easiest way to, to find out where to contact your teachers in your course syllabus. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, we're going to do a couple things here in this, um, this topics area. First of all, let's take a look at this news forum. That means that when your teacher posts something that you're going to get an email from it. So that begs the question, well, is my email up to date. So let's go down the left hand column here and we're going to take a look at um, edit profile. Now based upon, so notice that was in the left hand column, I went to uh, my profile settings, I went to edit profile. Okay so here is your profile um, 
And notice that it has a lot of interesting information here, like it has a lot of personal information about me. Uh, so, uh, so basically, we want to make sure that our email address here is, is correct. Uh, that's the most important thing. As long as your email address is correct, you're going to get the, the course announcements, announcements and different things from your teacher. So you want to double check that your email address is correct. Uh, everything else is kind of maybe not optional, but, um, but isn't going to hinder you from receiving important announcements on your server. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and go back. I don't need to save anything here. Uh, notice that the authentication method is set to LDAP. Um, that's a way that um, large organizations can um, manage logins. Okay, so okay, now you notice that when I clicked on this course guide before, okay, so now we're back to the, the first topic in our course. And you notice when I clicked on this course guide that a Word document came up. So that's a Microsoft Word. When I clicked on it, it said open with Microsoft Word. So obviously you need some kind of office suite to be successful in this online course. Now, if your computer is from a school, you probably have um, a, an office suite uh, installed on your computer. And generally an office suite is Microsoft Office. That's the, that is the, the standard uh, in business and education. So if you go on your computer, you should see something along the lines of um, Microsoft Office and you should see Excel, PowerPoint, and Word. These are kind of the bread and butter of working on a computer basically. Um, you know, you're going to have a lot of stuff online, you're going to have different types of assignments, different websites, but at the end of the day you have to have these three programs installed on your computer. Um, they're, they're the majority of computer work uh, still today gets done in in those office programs. Now, what if you don't have those programs? They, they are expensive. Um, oftentimes they are not sold with a computer. Uh, and not what I mean is they, they cost extra. So say if you're buying a $250 computer, you're going to spend another 100 or $200 on uh, a Microsoft Office. So a good alternative to that is um, Open Office. Okay, uh, and in fact, uh, there are a couple variants of OpenOffice. Um, there are a couple variants of OpenOffice. Uh, this is kind of the plain Jane OpenOffice here. Uh, you should look it up yourself, maybe. So OpenOffice is a good option. Also, uh, there's a second uh, variant of OpenOffice called LibreOffice. Okay, so this is basically built off of OpenOffice. Both of these options uh, will save compatible files to Microsoft Office. So uh, they're going to be a little bit more glitchy. They're not going to be quite as polished as Microsoft Office. But they're not only free, but they're also interoperable. So that means when, you're, when your um, teacher creates a Word document in Microsoft Word, you will be able to open it in LibreOffice or Libra Office or uh, Open Office. L I B R E is Libra. It's French for book. It's a French company that makes the variant of Open Office there. Okay, so um, so that is a, a basic tool for success. So as we're going through our first topic here of our online course, those are a couple things that need to happen. You need to have your email address updated. You also need to have a um, Office suite of programs, and that's a uh, Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, or the equivalent, which is OpenOffice. Okay, so let's go ahead and go down. We're going to take a, a look just real quickly at, um, at an assignment here. Okay, so we talked a little bit about Microsoft Office. Now let's talk about the actual browser we're using. Um, it's important that you have an updated version of Firefox or Internet Explorer. Obviously, if you're watching this video, you already have figured that out. Um, so if we go to Firefox and we go to help and we go to about Firefox, uh, we can see that if this, you know, right now, uh, it's actually downloading an update. So uh, we see here that I'm using version 12. Uh, it's downloading an update. I'm not going to click apply update now because it would restart my browser. <clears throat> but that will occur when I restart my browser. So you want to have an updated version of Firefox. You also want to update your... Um, 
just in general to have a good user experience, you also want to go ahead and have the, the latest version of, of, uh, of Flash. So, <clears throat> so if you search Adobe Flash Player Update, um, what you're going to get uh, if you go to Google is that you're going to get this Adobe Flash Player. Make sure you go to adobe.com to get your Flash Player. There's no real reason to. Um, to go anywhere else and you just want to get this get latest version of the Adobe Flash Player you can also just go to adobe.com and then you'll find it um, now an interesting thing here this is if you have your own computer if you're working on your computer at home or if you have a computer that you have control of if you have a computer from the school district or from your business where a computer administrator is has full control of your computer you can't install things on your computer uh, this would not apply to you uh, so basically those are really the two pieces of internet software that you need to have updated on your machine. <coughs> Excuse me. You need to have an updated browser. That's Firefox or Internet Explorer. And you need to have that Flash plugin. And that's going to get you about you know, 90% 90, 90 of all web content. Uh, you may all want, also want to have the Silverlight player from uh, Microsoft installed just to be safe. There are some major sites that use that player as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue on. We're going to go ahead and take a look at um, uh, actually uploading a document. So if I go to Microsoft Word, let's say that I'm working in a blank document in Microsoft Word, and uh, one of the main technical skills is saving a lot of documents. So let's say I have this document. It's my English document. I need to understand how it is to save files and then upload them. So let's go to Save As. And let's talk a little bit about a technical skill of just naming files. So if I go in and I've made a folder on my desktop, you'll, you'll learn how to do this if you don't already know. Is English Assignment a good file name? I use that as a sample file name in another video. And the answer is no. It's not a good, it's not a good file name. So your teacher should give you a, uh, a standard way to name your files. In general, uh, it's a good idea to name uh, your files uh, with the name, year, and subject at least. Okay, so depending on how you want to organize your files, I would go ahead and name them um, with the year first. And I use underscores, but you might you might feel differently. English, and then the the assignment names. This would be assignment. Let's see, it's assignment two, and then my name. Okay, so uh, it's always better to have descriptive file names. So here I named it with the year, with the subject, with the assignment name, and with my name. In this way, when you save, let's say I had a hundred files inside of this folder, I could easily tell when the file was from. I may even want to put the month, um, uh, and that way, you know, it's kind of backwards. So I'd put a year first and then the month. Let's say that the year, the month was May. Uh, I'm sorry, so April. So I'd put 2012-04 for April, and then English, and then the assignment name, and then my name. If I use this naming convention all the time, what I would get is a list of files that if I sorted it on name, I'd get a chronological list of files and assignments. So if you think through your, your file naming convention and you use that consistently, what will happen over time is that you will have incredibly organized files and things will be very easy to find. So even if I dumped every file I made in school into a single folder, with this naming convention, I would already know what exactly every file was without having to open it. Basically, in the file name, you want to know what's in the file without ever having to open the file. <clears throat> so this is an excellent naming convention. Year, month, subject, assignment name, and then your name. The your name part really doesn't matter for you. Everything on your computer is going to be made by you mainly. However, if you have a, a instructor that doesn't use Moodle, like for example, when you upload things in Moodle, they should know who it came from because Moodle will tag it with your name. However, uh, 
if they're a teacher that's asking you to email things or you know isn't organized on their part, you might run into a case where, where it would be better to have your name in the file name. Okay, so let's say that I save that. Um, and the file naming conventions would work in any any type of uh, of, of uh, program. So even if I was saving a, a cell spreadsheet or I had saved something off the internet, uh, those fi that file naming convention is really important and you should use it all the time. Okay, so let's say that now I've saved this and I, now I want to turn it into a course. So I would go, let's say for example, now I'm just going to go to a sample activity here in a course. So this is what an activity would look like. Notice that um, you really have two types of things in Moodle. Okay, so if I look at my, I'm, I'm clicking between tabs here, so notice that I'm going from, this is a course template that I'm looking at now, so it just has a lot of sample things in it, and this is an actual course. So notice that when I go down on this course, notice that these icons say a lot about what is listed. So if I go to this first topic here in this course, so I'm in topic one, right? It's called intern orientation. Um, notice that in the topic, I have a lot of introductory text here. So I'd read through, you know, I'd read this, read this text to find out what's happening in the topic. Then I'd go through, um, I would read this next uh, uh, assignment here. Notice that everything should be set up in your course that you would go from one one assignment or one one resource or activity to the next. Okay, so a resource is going to be something that you don't turn something in for. Okay, so a resource is going to be some piece of information, some instructions, but not something that you're going to upload for. So notice that in this Learn It section, I have Learn It Directions. So let me click on that. And this is an example of a resource. So a resource is going to be just information. So this is a Learn It it has directions okay so it tells you some things that you're going to be doing let me go back to the main course page the next thing in this learn it section is a video a video is an, also an example of a resource um, now in this case the video you'd want to go and look at it it may actually contain a quiz or something like that but you would go through it and it's a resource it's not something that you directly upload into Okay, now this next one, do you see this little, there's like a hand icon and it's holding a piece of paper? Well, that is the icon for an activity, and an activity is different than a resource, okay? So in, the, in Moodle terminology, a resource is something that shows you information. An activity is something that requires you to do something. So, um, and activities can actually have different icons. If you look down here, these are all activities now like for example a wiki a quiz a lesson journal some of them have their own icons most of them however have this uh, hand turning in a piece of paper so at its most basic there are a couple of different basic activities here uh, and one is where you upload a file so let's take a look at uploading files this is a sample advanced upload of files notice that this is a sample assignment, so it's not going to have any text, but you have kind of instructions up here. And then at the bottom of the page, you will, that's where you'll upload your file. So let's say it, it has said, oh, okay, you have to write a creative writing for one page. You'd write that, obviously, in your Word document. Um, whoops. You'd write that in your Word document, and then when you're finished, you'd save that Word document to your computer. Then we'd go here, click Upload Files we click add okay we get this file upload dialog or file picker dialog we click upload file click browse okay so now I'm looking through my computer obviously I just saved my my file to the desktop in the school folder in English remember this is where we were talking about our naming convention so let's say that's my assignment I click upload file and this is what I get to so notice that I see my my file name here. I would have to click Save Changes. You must click Save Changes. That is the most common mistake made by, by students. Okay, so now I see my file has been turned into this assignment. That's how I'd turn something in on an online course. So I'd follow the instructions. I create my file, you know, my Word document, my Excel 
spreadsheet, my PowerPoint presentation, and then I upload it using this file picker. So if I click edit these files, let's say I, I decide I don't want to turn this file in, I want to turn in a different file, I might click this icon here and click delete. Now watch what happens. Let's say, so I get to this confirmation. I say, yes, I want to delete it. Okay, so I'm done, right? And I click the back button in my browser. Notice I don't click save changes. I click the back button or I just close my browser. Guess what? Nothing happened. Okay, I didn't actually delete that file. So this can be a really, this can really matter. It's a real skill. Okay, so if we click edit these files again, Let's say I really deleted this time. You know, it's something I did not want to turn in for the assignment. I click yes. I have to click save changes at that point or nothing will be saved. Okay, so remember in the file, in the upload files dialog, unless you click save changes, no files are changed, no files are saved, no files are deleted, nothing happens until you click save changes when you're uploading files. Okay, that's a major, major point. So. So that is the first uh, most basic type of assignment. That's where you're saving a file that you've made in some kind of a program and you're uploading it to an activity. Okay, so let's go back to the second type of basic activity. Uh, our basic skill set here. Going through quite a set of screens here. Just clicking back to get to back to the main course page. I can also just click on the left hand side, which you're not seeing. Um, okay. So that was an example of advanced upload of files activity. Okay. The single file upload works the same. Let's take a look at the online text activity. Uh, this is another type of activity that you'll see in your courses. Also very simple. Okay, so basically what will happen is you'd have a list of instructions the teacher would say, or the instructions would say something to the effect that you need to write some online text or you know respond to some link. And basically when you see edit my submission, this is where you're going to click to, to make your changes to the text. So let's say um, uh, this text box will open up. Uh, it says edited submission, but you'd say, for example, this is my answer. Okay, and I click Save Changes, and it says your changes have been saved, and then you'll see your text below. Okay, so let's get back to our, so those are two examples of two types of activities that you'll see in your courses. We'll go into some other types of activities, but those are the basics. Um, okay, so in our course, remember we are talking about the structure of the online course. So we have our, our main, our topic outline at the top, that's our first topic, and then we, we went into our, um, sorry, the first topic listed on the page is kind of the course topic, right? It has our news forum, it has our syllabus or course guide, and then this is where the content starts. So this one right here, this first topic would be like the first chapter in our textbook, basically. Okay, so we scroll down, and then we would click on these links to either see a resource, which is some types of instructions. It's called a resource in Moodle. You could call it a reading or a link or something like that. And then we have some type of activity here. And these activities are where you're actually turning things in to the teacher. OK, so those are the basic uh, skills and resources that you need to be successful in an online course. Uh, I hope it helped.